we are gathered here today to what? mourn the passing of TNA Wrestling. Well, kind of. Shut up. Taken before their time at the young age of however long they were on television. TNA, well, the writing was on the wall. For years now, we've discussed about uh, uh, TNA's troubled history, their problems with the law, their problems with ratings and networks, and, and, and they had, they had um, um, network after network and, and home after home. They couldn't seem to, to hold down a, a simple location. They've been plagued by problem after problem, both internal and external, and, and friends – it's time for us to lay TNA to rest. In the arms of Shut up. What? We're left with a mystery. We're, we're, we're left with the comfort of the unknown in our hearts. And that mystery, my friends, what, we can bond over this mystery. We can discuss it. We can figure it out. You and I and all the Mayhem Americans. We can figure this out. And that mystery is, what was it? What was the linchpin? What was at the heart of TNA's failure? Many factors can be blamed. Which amongst them is the most damning? Personally, uh, I think that uh, TNA's biggest problem throughout the years was brand management. Mm-hmm. Sure, they made a lot of mistakes and they got some bad PR and everything like that. And, and you know, they had some downtime and everything like that. But, I mean, any company worth its salt can bring in a consultant that, who actually knows what they're talking about and rejuvenate their brand. BP is still a huge corporation in America and they got some of the worst PR imaginable. They are still a profitable organization. TNA could have turned it all around, but unfortunately, uh, they got some very bad advice and did not manage their brand properly. They could have overcome all of it with good PR, and that's what failed them in the end. Hmm. Hmm. Well said. Thanks. That's mine. Anyone else? I would like to say that um, the biggest thing that hurt TNA is – Lack of accountability. Now, when you're running a business and your business is losing money, as reportedly TNA did for a long, long time, one would assume that if you continue to lose money, your company would eventually go out of business. But this company didn't go out of business because, as far as I know, another company just kept pumping more money into the company that was losing all the money. That just doesn't seem like a motivation to succeed on anyone's part. Now, if you're fighting for your very survival, you'll probably get some better content and some better product. But if you know that no matter how bad you suck and how much money you lose, (laughs) someone will be there to bail you out, where's the motivation? That's where I'm at. Hmm. Uh, I got mine. Uh, I think a best way to sum, in my opinion, the biggest problem with TNA into one little package is is by saying dated content. Uh, and I am not just talking their performers that they tend to bring in from the WWE or WCW or any you know recognizable figure and name that would be willing to take a paycheck. Um, it's also from their product. Minus a period in like 2005, 2006, TNA's content has been very dated. Um, you, it doesn't work with the times necessarily, uh, especially in the past, like, I want to say like seven or eight years. Their content has been been in an era 10 years too late, I would say. Um, and, and I feel like that's a sign of not – Growing and not adapting, and not being willing enough to look at look at what's going on around you and say, "Hey, this is what people want. This is what's growing in popularity. This is the kind of style that's growing," um, and and utilizing that. I think, and and to 
you know, obviously don't take his word for it necessarily. And, and this has been in like WWE style documentaries, but I remember the one thing Paul Heyman keeps bringing up every time that he does like an ECW style documentary is that if ECW was around today, it would not be like how ECW was. It would be more, he would say he would have more of like an MMA kind of, it would be a lot like what Ring of Honor became. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is that that's what he believes is that he would have adapted the style to to where it would fit with the time, and I feel like TNA has, uh, like I said, besides that period where the X division was prominent, and that style was prominent. Other than that, their their content has been extremely extremely dated. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I I I've, I've mine. Uh, mine is also going to be a two word phrase with the initials DC. And uh, that is Dixie Carter. Um, she, uh, I, I listened to her interviews uh, her on the, the uh, Jim Ross podcast, or the Steve Austin podcast. It was one of them. And um, she came, like, 